All right, Christmas is upon us, and that means family dinners, family gatherings. Uh, and as a vegan, or as anyone who has particular dietary preferences, this can be a challenging time, of course, because you know you go to a family gathering, family dinner, everyone's sharing food, and you have to bring your own food, uh, or maybe you have to make special requests to the host to to be able to accommodate your needs. Uh, that's sort of challenging to do, and of course, once you're there at the table, typically there will be questions. And personally, I love Christmas, and my family and extended family they're pretty cool. So I haven't really experienced any nasty comments or anything like that. But there certainly are questions like, why are you eating that, or why don't you just eat this instead, or why aren't you eating meat, etc. And in this video, I want to share a few tips and tricks with you of how I deal with that situation. So first of all, I just want to let you know that this video is kind of like a spin-off of an article that I just wrote uh, entitled Surviving Christmas Dinners as a Vegan, okay? Uh, it's on our website, sweetnaturalliving.com, you can check it out there. We have a few other articles there as well. And we actually make a newsletter every month. We send out a few, uh, an email every week pretty much, but once a month it's a newsletter with an article, with a few fun facts. Uh, a few different cool things. So if you're interested in being, you know, staying up to date with all our articles, you can sign up to our newsletter on our website, sweetnaturalliving.com. All right. So let's get into it. Family dinners, surviving them, Christmas dinners as a vegan. First tip that I want to give you, and this one is huge. It's not a big deal. What I mean by that is when you're very interested in something, when you're very passionate about something, like for example, you just went vegan, right? You just started eating a fruit-based diet. You're excited about how nutritious this diet is. You're excited about how beneficial it is. Or maybe you're excited about the ethics of a vegan diet, etc. Whatever it is, when you're very excited and passionate about something, it's only natural you want to talk about it and you feel like your life maybe revolves around that a little bit. And that's fine, that's cool. That's, that's what makes life awesome when you're obsessed about something in a good way. But you gotta bear in mind that that doesn't mean that everyone else's life revolves around the same thing as you're interested in. And so when I say it's not a big deal, I mean just remember that food and what you eat, it's, it's just a small part of life as a whole. So when you're there at the dinner, don't make a big deal about it. It's just food. It's just you choose to eat this, they choose to eat that. We gotta respect each other's choices and realize that that's just a small part of it. And remember, why are we meeting in the first place? You know, why are we sitting down as a family? Why are we enjoying this meal together? Is it just because, well, we need to eat and we might as well do it together? Not really. We're eating together because it is a way for us to connect. So it's about connection, it's about sharing. And the food is just like a little thing that we do. To, to, it's like an excuse almost to be able to sit down and really connect. So you got to be able to sort of look past the food. That's important. Although it's tempting to sort of start speaking up for the animals maybe when you see someone eating, eating meat or something. You got to realize if, if that's what you want to do, if your objective is to, to speak up for the animals, you can just say goodbye to having a good time with your family because that's just not going to happen. No one, no one likes a preachy vegan at the table. It's just not the way it is. So uh, if you're interested at all in actually enjoying this important part of life, which is sharing food with, with other people sitting down at the table, you have to be able to let go of, uh, of that a little bit and just realize in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. Second thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to be apologetic about it because that just sort of makes it uh, seem bigger than it is. Like when you when you rock up with your own food, or if you do make special requests to the host, uh, don't be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," you know, creating. Oh, thanks for making it for me. I'm so sorry to for the inconvenience, or or like be like, you know, sorry for existing kind of a person. Um, just be bold. Do your thing. Here I am with my food. You don't have to say that, obviously. You shouldn't say that. Just make no, there's no big deal, all right? Like, just do it like it's the most normal thing in the world. You're just like, here I am with my food. You're eating what you're eating. I'm eating what I, I'm eating. That's it. No, no big deal. Then, of course, here's the tricky part answering questions. People start asking questions, right? That's, that's obvious. That's expectable. 
And of course, if it's just like, what's that? And you're like, oh, this is persimmons. It's a fruit. Or what's that? Oh, it's it's just potatoes. I don't know. Um, that's easy. But what about when people say things like, why? Why don't you eat what the rest of us are eating? Why are you eating persimmons? That's when it gets a little bit difficult. And this is a matter of conversational skills, really. It's it's a matter of realizing that there's a time and a place for everything. So you don't want to use this situation as a platform to promote anything. You don't want to you don't want to start promoting why you're eating this way and why it's so bad to eat meat or anything like that. That's that's risky. That's that's probably going to turn the situation into something not so uh, chilled. And remember, when you're eating with your family like that, it's all about keeping it chilled, keeping it relaxed, keeping it casual. So table talk, com uh, light conversation. It's not because we don't want to talk about real issues or deep stuff. It's because we want to eat. We want to just share a kind of relaxed energy. And so deep discussions about a particular topic, that's best done after the meal, you know. At the table, it's all about keeping things light. So keep these three things in mind when answering questions. Keep it simple, stay calm, and focus on you. I'll tell you what I mean by those three. Keep it simple. Don't make a big answer. Like, just try to answer any question in, like, one sentence. Because basically you don't want to dwell too much on the diet subject. People are very sensitive about the subject of diet. So if you dwell for too long on it, if you go like start explaining and talking and going through your whole story of why you figured out this was better for you, etc., you're just going to end up sort of creating too much attention on people are going to start. That's not your fault, but just people tend to be so sensitive that when you start talking about diet, they start feeling like they're attacked, like you're attacking the way they're eating. They start defending themselves by attacking you, and it just becomes, it, the situation gets out of hand. So, why aren't you eating this food? Why are you eating persimmons? I just prefer persimmons. I just like the taste of it. Oh, I, it just, I like the way, way it makes me feel. I love it. Can, try to keep it on a positive note, right? Rather than saying negative things like, oh, meat just makes me feel horrible because they're eating meat right there and then, they might feel offended by something like that. It feels like you're saying that they shouldn't eat meat either. Rather than doing that, just say what you're doing because you like it. Like, I just eat persimmons because I love persimmons. They make me feel amazing and yeah, that's it. Keep it simple. Stay calm is the second tip and that is very important. Don't get aggressive. And even if the person asking you a question is kind of like, Mm -hmm. Like if it's an aggressive comment or some, even a hateful kind of really um, rude comment even, stay calm. It's just a reflection of them. It's a reflection of their insecurities about what they're eating. Maybe they're feeling offended by the fact that you're eating something that they're not eating and you feel like they feel like you're judging them for eating meat, for example. Uh, stay calm. Take a moment before you answer just to sort of gather yourself. And again, keep it simple. Just that one, one answer, just bam, done, move on. And uh, don't dwell on it. And the last thing is to focus on you, not them. And what that means is basically, when they ask things, don't point to their plate, don't talk about what they're doing and why it's bad. Focus on what you're doing and why you're doing it, why it's good. I eat fruit because it's, it's awesome. I love the way it makes me feel. It's changed my life since I started eating fruit. Or, I love the idea of not having to kill animals in order to eat. Although that one is a bit risky because then suddenly they might start arguing why, about why they think it's fine to kill animals to eat them, and etc. And then, again, if that happens, you'll just, you'll just have to stay calm and be like, well, okay, well, I don't think so anyway. You know, you gotta be able to sort of keep the conversation light and abort if it goes too far, right? Because you don't want to get into a discussion about diet. That's just not... Not, no one really likes that. If someone's genuinely interested in nutrition or they just genuinely have some questions, you can talk about it later on a one-to-one -one basis. That's much easier. At the table, there's too many people involved and if two people start getting into discussion, it sort of affects everyone else as well. So uh, yeah, keep it light. Last but not least, remember that it's all about sharing. So the food, it's almost like a symbol, it's almost like a sacrament in the middle of a ritual, sitting down to eat together. So when you're arriving at a place, the host likes to give you a drink or something, right? 
And it's important to accept that. So even if it's just a glass of water, right? And even if you're not thirsty, just accept that glass of water because that acceptance is sort of a contract where you're saying, I accept your love, I accept your uh, hospitality. Uh, I'm open uh, rather than saying no to everything and just having your own, it sort of sets you apart from the group. And that also goes for the food. Like if you're able to find something on the table, something that everyone else is eating, that you can eat as well, that fits your dietary preferences, that's great because that means you're actually literally sharing food. And that is an important aspect of eating together. Uh, if you're not able to do that, maybe you brought some of, some of your own food, maybe you brought persimmons or maybe you brought potatoes, whatever it is. Uh, bring a little bit extra and, and put it on the table and say, hey, if anyone, anyone wants any, uh, feel free to have some, but make sure to make it like a, like a, low key kind of thing. You don't want to make a big deal out of it again because then you're putting all the focus on the fact that you're eating something different from everyone else and there's just uh, no, no point in doing that. So just like uh, bring a little bit of food, maybe put it on the table for everyone to share. Uh, maybe even if you're cooking, cook up something that you can eat and that everyone else can eat well and it just sort of blends in with everything else and you're able to share food. So that's it really. I think the whole situation of sharing food with people going to these family dinners as a vegan as a vegetarian or whatever, uh, it it's only difficult if you make it difficult. If you if you start trying to preach or start trying to educate people or start trying to explain in depth why this is so good or you know anything like that, that's when it gets difficult. You have to realize there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, if you want to share something, make YouTube videos about it. Start talking about it. Write articles about it, like I'm doing. And if someone's genuinely interested, talk to them about it. Absolutely, share your thoughts, but not at the table. Uh, and only if someone's genuinely interested. So remember that when going into this situation, remember your objective. Your objective is family, friends, love, sharing, sharing vibes, sharing energy, communicating in a light, enjoyable, loving manner. So it's best to keep sensitive subjects like diet off the table no pun intended. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Thanks so much for subscribing to this channel, watching my videos, Mads' videos, uh, sharing your thoughts in the comment section. We really appreciate you. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for being a part of the whole Sweet Natural Living community. Go to patreon.com if you want to be part of an even more close-knit community. We have a sort of insider's club, so to speak, there where you pay a little bit to get access to exclusive content that's not available elsewhere. Check out that article. We also have another article on a very similar subject. Have a good day. Have a good uh, few days now that Christmas is upon us. Enjoy your family dinners. And yeah, have a good time. See you around.